appreciate that, amen. It's good when it takes a while to get around, too, amen. That's good stuff right there, amen. Well, we want you to stand one more time, amen. I know you, you're starting to get the idea we're going to stand a lot today, amen. This might be it right here. I pray that somebody come unglued, come to their feet, amen, ready to worship, shout, sing, carry on. All that's biblical and all that's right in line right here at this church, amen. We love the Lord. We like to shout. We like to run. We like to cry, amen. We like to lift holy hands at this church, amen, just because he's worthy this morning, amen. Amen. We're going to do our scholarship fund, amen, our penny march. This goes to all our young children. Uh, if they're members of this church, and amen, they go on to pursue higher education. Uh, we try to be a blessing and a help to them with a scholarship to send them down the road. Uh, you say, preacher, college is expensive, amen. There's several in this room that can attest to that. Uh, but amen, if you got some pennies, some nickels, some dimes, some quarters, a one, a five, a ten, a 20, a 50, or 100, God can use all that, and amen, pay for college, amen. Uh, so amen, all you got to do is stand. We're going to sing this the day the Lord has made, and these youngsters are going to come and rob you. It ain't the IRS coming after you. Amen. You can smile about it. Amen. It'll be a great joy to give. Amen. We'll sing this the day the Lord has made as these youngsters come. Amen. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made amen good to see youngsters in the house of god amen amen everybody can sit down unless you belong to the choir then you're going to stand a little bit longer amen and if you sit down and you want to be in the choir come on this morning amen
I do this work. Yes, he is.
Yes, Lord. thankful for the goodness of God this morning. Amen. Boy, where would we be without it? Amen. Amen. You enjoy that singing this morning. Amen. Let's give the choir a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Amen. Appreciate the opportunity to be able to sing his songs. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. But I appreciate the worship. Amen. I love when the sweet spirit moves in that choir. Amen. It's almost like a tidal wave. It starts on one side and then goes to the other. But boy, I tell you, I love it. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house here today. Amen. Now listen, it may be dreary and raining on the outside of that world, but on the inside, we got something to be excited about. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I know who Jesus is. Amen. He is more than just a story. He's the king of all glory, and we've got a reason to worship him here this morning. Amen. Boy, God's been good, amen. We can leave now and say it's been good to be at the house, uh, but I do believe this is where the Lord would have us to be, uh, amen, in this particular moment, this particular time, uh, amen, as I uh, battled with the Lord this week, amen, as to what to preach. I said, Lord, I said, uh, this will be the last Sunday morning for some time uh, that my people will hear me preach, amen, and I... God, I don't want to go out with a bang, but I do want to be obedient and, amen, say something from this pulpit to encourage this church, amen, before we go into homecoming, before revival gets here, uh, amen, in preparation of what God would have said and done here today, uh, and amen, in doing so, this is where the Lord has led. Uh, we pray that it be a help and a blessing unto you. I want to remind you, this altar is wide open. 
Any given time in this service you feel the call or the tug or the feel to come to this altar, do not wait for an invitation from me. If God's calling, that's the best invitation you'll ever get. You can come down at any given time. You're not going to bother my preaching. Uh, amen. I, I, I can preach with anybody that shouts, anybody that cries. Amen. Any youngin that screams, amen, I can out-preach them. And amen, if I couldn't, I need to sit down and let somebody else give it a try. That old fellow over there has got a suit and tie on. I believe he's ready for the challenge. Amen. Amen. I told him, I said, brother, I said, I'll split the cost with you. Amen. You just preached this morning. Amen. God's been good, ain't he? Amen. I love him. I appreciate him. I'm glad he gave me another day. Amen. He could have left me in the bed this morning. I could be sick. I could be afflicted. could be in the hospital. could be six feet under. But amen, this is the day the Lord's given me. I want to shout and give him glory this morning. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you would, turn to the book of the Judges this morning. The book of the Judges, chapter number 15 this morning. Holy Ghost shows up and gets warm. Amen. Amen. If it's your first time visiting, amen, would you just raise your hand? Or actually, would you just stand up? We just want to look at you real quick. If it's your first time visiting, you just stand up. We don't mean to embarrass you. We just like to look at you. Amen. Let's give them a hand for being here this morning. Amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. Good to have you. Good to see you. Uh, we're, we're just a little church by the highway that loves the Lord. Amen. We just continue on to that purpose because God called us to us. Amen. We ain't nothing fancy, uh, but amen, we're fancy in the Lord here this morning. Amen. Uh, the book of the Judges this morning, chapter number 15, when you find your place, stand for the reading of God's holy word and reverence to the author therein. Uh, what a joy and what a privilege it is to be able to open the sacred book. I got to thinking about how unworthy I am. Amen. I, I know where I've been and what I've done in my past and in my life. And boy, I got to thinking, Brother Troy, I'm not even worthy to even open the pages of this Bible. Uh, but I'm glad God gave it to me. Amen. I'm glad that he allows me to preach out of it. Uh, what a blessing it is to have the blessed word. If you wonder what the Bible is, that is God's mind on paper. That's what he thinks about you and me this morning. I read a lot of promises and a lot of blessings in this Bible. And here's another one here this morning in the book of Judges. Judges chapter number 15. We're going to begin reading in verse number 11. Judges in chapter number 15, verse number 11. If you have your place, would you shout an amen so loud that the heavens can hear you this morning? Amen. The Bible says in Judges 15 and verse 11, then, am I in the right place? Where am I at, Brother Choi? Tell me. Where are we at this morning, church? Judges what? I like that. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etom and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, I did, I, I, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee in the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, Swear unto me, that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they brought him, and they bound him with two new cords, and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax, that were, was burnt with fire, and his bands was loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put thereforth in his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Ramoth Lehi. And he was sore athirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given thy, this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? I like verse number 19. But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again and... He revived. I need some participation this morning. Help me read those three words. And he revived. One more time. And he revived. One more time. And he revived. Say it one more time because you love the Lord. And he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in Hangnock, which is Lehi unto this day. 
My precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I do love you. God, I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to stand behind the sacred desk. Now, God, I pray that you would help me just for a little while. God, preach me now like you never have before. God, I'm going to need your help and your touch in a mighty way. God, I don't know the need of this message this morning. Uh, but, God, you've sent it this way, and we're going to trust you here with it. God, I don't know the heart or the condition of anyone that has walked into this place. But, God, I know you do this morning. And, God, they're not here by accident. They're not here because of happenstance. God, I believe you've called them for such a time as this. God, I pray, Lord, that this word would go forth. God, that it would go beyond the ear. God, find a lodging place deep down in our heart. God, I pray that you would help the preacher one more time. Anoint him with Holy Ghost fire from the top of his head. Lord, of the sole of his feet, that God, he would preach. Exactly everything needs to be said according to your word and to your will. God, we'll be careful to praise you. Thank you for all that you do. For it's in the name of Jesus we do ask. All God's people shouted. Be seated here this morning if you can. Uh, we all know the character uh, that we speak of this morning is Samson. Uh, uh, there is a background of Samson that is not only a, a, a crazy story, a wild story, uh, but it also has a strange background to it. Uh, everybody knows, even the world knows, uh, that when you mention the name of Samson, you think of He-Man. Uh, you think of the strongest man in the world. Uh, uh, but can I tell you, there is a lot of background. Uh, if you really got to know who he was in the past, uh, it'd make you feel a lot better about who he he is right now in the text. Uh, if you go back to chapter number 14, we won't do it for sake of time, uh, uh, but you'll find out that there was a Philistine woman uh, that he had desired to marry uh, and he went to marry her and because of circumstance, uh, uh, because of things that took place and happened, uh, amen, he did not marry her. Uh, but come to chapter 15 in the beginning of the context, uh, you'll find out in chapter number 15 uh, uh, that he was one that went back to find that woman uh, and he wanted to marry her all over again uh, and and by the time he found the woman again, she done run off with his best man. Well, that sounds like Hallmark, doesn't it? <laughs> Ladies, let me help you. I know Hallmark season's upon us. The dude you see her with first, that ain't the one. It's the one that, amen, is contrary and the one you don't think. That, that's the one she's going to end up with. Somehow it's going to work out the end. <laughs> Boys, I just saved you all a lot of heartache right there. Amen. <laughs> amen. This is like Hallmark. I mean, this is a story, I mean, this has got some, some strangeness to it, some wildness to it. So therefore, we read not only in chapter number 15 that, that, he, that she ran off with the best man in the wedding, but the Bible shows us that he's mad about it. I don't know, I'd be a little upset too, amen. The Bible shows that he's so mad that he goes and he catches 300 foxes. And he ties their tails together and in the center of them breaks out a fire and turns them loose huh, in the crops of the Philistines huh, so that all their corn, all their okra, all their green beans just burn flat to the ground. You understand this morning that he's a little upset. And amen, when he's upset, he does something about it, amen. We see that, that Samson is, is, is mighty fierce about his revenge upon them. Now we come to where we are in the text and we know the Philistines want him. They desire to have him, to hurt him, to capture him, and to maim him. But what's sad about the story is they didn't have the gall to go do it themselves. They went unto the people of Judah and said, Go get your champion, bind him up, and bring him to us. Here we are in the text and we see that Samson... In verse number 14, you see that the Spirit of God loosened him. Amen. I'm glad that it still takes the Spirit of God to loosen men and women. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, you'll not loosen yourself, child of God. Uh, if you think you're going to fix you, uh, you got another thing coming. Uh, because you couldn't fix you if there were two of you. Amen. Uh, honey, you're so bad at fixing yourself. Uh, it's like trying to hit water falling out of a boat. You couldn't do it right. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, there comes a time uh, where a man must know uh, and a woman must see uh, that they're lost and undone uh, and they're in need of a Savior. Uh, and when the Spirit of God comes upon a man or becomes on a woman. That's when God can move and He sets captives free. I'm glad to report this morning that He's still setting captives free. Amen. He's still in the saving business this morning. I'm glad I serve a Savior who can save to the uttermost. And if you ain't saved this morning, He can save who you are this morning. The Bible shows us that Samson got wore out and got weary, Brother Troy. Uh, he is, the Bible said, sore athirst. He slew a thousand men and he gets wore out. He gets put down. I don't know about you, but hey amen, just walking sometimes wears me out. He slays a thousand men and he gets 
revived out of what God made, Brother Troy. I want to preach to your heart just this simple little thought this morning. And he revived. It's right in the text here this morning. That word revived, Brother Troy, I looked it up. We got revival coming not very long down the road. I'm excited, amen. Uh, revival is just upon us. And I got to look at that, Brother Norman, and revive means to be restored. It means to be refreshed. It means to be renewed to life and to vigor and give stamina. It's a restoration. That's, a, that's what a revival is. It's not only the physical, it's the mental and it's the spiritual that goes along with it. Uh, revival is not just a meeting. If it's just a meeting, amen, there's not worth going to. But if it's a true revival, you won't be able to hold them in the doors when they come in to get it. Amen. Uh, you understand that revival, now I'm going to be careful what I say here. When we come to revival, we come to get refreshed and we get renewed. Revival is not all about souls getting saved. Now, now, now hear me. I, I, I know that we're in the soul seeking business. We want to see souls come to know the Lord. But revival is not about souls getting saved. You understand revivals is about people getting fired up again. It's about people knocking off the rust and the dust off their Bible. Somebody say amen right there. It's about people in churches getting restored huh, and getting a renewed spirit about them huh, that catches fire and ignites huh, and it touches and captivates huh, and moves them. And if a church gets on fire, people will get saved. Amen. Uh, revival is, is for the church. I've preached a many revival before, and I, I, this is what I've learned about revival. Uh, revival, the biggest blessing of revival is after I leave. Not because I didn't like the church I was at, but the biggest blessing is when I leave and I get a phone call or a text from the pastor saying, man, you wouldn't believe it. The next meeting after you left, we had three come to know the Lord is Jesus Christ as Savior. Amen and hallelujah goes right there. I believe if a church gets where it needs to, souls will come in, people will get help, lives will be changed, and people will change in who they are. Oh, can I say that revival is real when people get renewed, get refreshed, and they get restored. Samson got his strength and his stamina back, and we can easily, let me stop and say this. I, I, can I be honest with y'all? No, you want me to lie to you? Surely you didn't show up to see the lying preacher, amen? I ain't a sugar cutter either, so I'm just going to give it to you between the eyes. Brother Brian, if we're being honest, if we take the halos off and put them in our purses, I mean, they're crooked anyway because they sit on our horns, right? Uh, let's be real about some things. We get weary in well-doing. We, 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 we get tired. We get tired even from doing the right thing sometimes. We, 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 we get wore out to such a moment uh, that we lose our fire, we lose our fervor, we even lose the desire for God and God's house. Revival is a place, though, where we can come and be revived. Just out of the text this morning, I'm going to be quick. This might take five minutes. Don't hold me to that. Uh, those of you that know better, know better. Amen. Uh, but number one, I want to show you something about and he revived. Number one, we see the man who needed reviving. Samson, we know to be a mighty man, a strong man. He is not only those things, but he's God's man. Amen. God foreordained his birth and told of his birth and told his mother and his father according to how to care for him and keep him concerning his life. We know that he is a man that is held in high regard. He is a man that is an example. He is one of the judges that judged all of Israel. He is a high authority. He is someone that people look up to and someone that people see. But can I say with all these attributes, I, he still got weary? You got to quit expecting the best out of people. Quit, quit expecting people to do something that they cannot do. Quit expecting the preacher to always be on fire because he's not. I don't expect you to always be on fire, so quit expecting it out of me. Amen. I expect there's times where you have one more week, and it's just a week you wish you never would have experienced. So do I. I, I. I mean, I know that the preacher is supposed to be some high lofty thing, but I put my pants on the same way you do. I go through troubles and trials just like you do. I, I, I see good days and bad days just like you do. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust the same. We know that there are bad days before us. So you understand that we all get tired and we get weary, and here's Samson. He's the example. He's the judge. He's the man. He's the one that's supposed to be the, 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 the one that sets Israel free out of the captivity of the Philistines. And here the Bible shows us, Sister Lindsay, he's weary. He's tired. 
He's worn out. Can I say in life, you're going to get tired, you're going to get worn out, and you're going to get weary. And no matter what you do, it never really just goes away like you want it to as fast as you want it to. Can I say this? With all the attributes, he still gets weary. And let me say this under your heart. It does not matter how much you pray, how much you read your Bible, how much church you go to. There's going to be times where you're going to get tired and weary and well-doing tonight or this morning. Amen. You understand that, that, that he is tired and wore out because of what he's done. He is an active man. Let me stop and say this. He is a working man in his community. I want to say this on behalf of this church. Thank God for the people that work in this church. Thank God for the ones that put forth effort in this church. I don't care if it's flushing a toilet. I don't care if it's vacuuming a floor. If it's our children's church, our nursery. Thank God that we got some working people at this church. Amen. Amen. Man, this thing just don't get cleaned up by itself. Uh, hey man, the lights just don't turn on by itself. Uh, I'm glad that people work in this church. Uh, and if you're one of those that are questioning if you're the worker or not, uh, chances are you ain't today. Amen. Uh, but there's always room for you to become a worker uh, and do something for the cause of God. Uh, this is God's house. Uh, and what better place uh, to serve and to worship uh, than in his house? We see that he's an active man and he's a working man. I'm thankful for what we have here, but can I say, but when you become weary and well-doing, it's possible to get less work out of you when you're trying to do the work of God. Can I, can I, you know what revival is, Brother Troy? I've got my nurses in here. i got some medicals in here. I'll tell you what I found out. Revival is like B12 to the soul. It's a big old shot. Boy, when they put that in you, it just perks you right up. Revival is something that we need. It's that big B12 that you go and you get. And it's not a B12, it's God. God. When God shows up, you get the big three, amen. And I'm glad when God shows up, amen, when we get true revival, it'll be when lives are changed, when people are helped. Now let me stop and say this. Revival's not when you're running the pews. It's not when you're shouting. It's not when you're crying. It's not when you're hooping and hollering. True revival begins in the heart first. You can run and shout and jump as many pews as you want to and still wind up in hell. But buddy, I'm telling you, when you get true revival down deep in your heart, down in your soul, honey, when it gets down on the inside of you, when that fire reignites, amen, like a fire shut up in your bones, it begins to move in you and move on you. How Samson was revived as he went unto the Lord. Samson recognized in the moment of need that he needed revival. Can I say that we got some that go to church that sadly they don't even know they need revival. Oh, I lost you there. Don't let me kill the meeting. There's some people that sit amongst us, amen, don't even know that we need revival. They don't even know that the nation needs a turning back to God. Amen, let me say this under your heart. The Bible shows us that he knew that he needed revival. And even though we have some that sit with us in our pews that don't know they need revival, honey, they might be cold, they might be dead, they might be as dry as, as last year's bird's nest. But can I say this under your heart? If God sweep through the land, honey, they won't remain dry for long. They'll get saturated by God. Honey, there are those that don't seek God's face. There are those that do not read their Bible. There are those that do not pray. There are those that will not pray for this revival that's coming and they just expect revival to show up. Neighbor, can I tell you something? Revival is not in the pocket of a preacher, nor is it in the tour bus of any songwriter. But I'll tell you where true revival begins. It begins when a saint of God gets down on his knees and begs and pleads with a thrice holy God, saying, God, send revival this way. God sends a revival. It changes who we are. True revival changes people. Oh, I like what the Bible shows. Let's go down to verse number 18, if you will. This is what the Bible says. And he was sore athirst. Watch here. And he called on the Lord. Brother Brian, there's just times that calling the preacher ain't going to get it done. There's just times calling the deacons ain't going to get it done. Honey, when you want to get a hold of God... Don't go through man to get to him. The Bible says that we can boldly approach the throne because of that word grace. I'm glad this morning. that, Honey, I don't need a second opinion. I don't need some priest to stand up for me. I don't need to be doused with water and say five Hail Marys. I'm glad I've got access. I'm glad I can go right to the throne and bow before him and say, God, I need you here today. Hey, listen, I'm here to tell you. It, it, 
If you need God and you need to get a hold of God, quit relying on some other source. Go right to Him. When you start going through other ways and other channels, you're saying, well, I can get to Him as long as I go this way. The Bible says there's only one way to Him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father lest he go by me. Amen. That's saying that you've got to go the same way I went. If God's going to do something in your life like he did for me, you're going to have to do it the same way I did it, Jack. Amen. Honey, can I say that we need to come to revival? Uh, not because we're uppity and not because we feel good and not because everything's working right and not because we had a great day at work. We need to come to revival because we need revival. Let me say this. Honey, when you get to the place where you stand in need of prayer and you call on the name of the Lord, he will refresh you. When you come to revival, I pray that you would come say, God, I need a blessing. I'm not listening and looking for anybody else. I'm not trying to hear what Joe Blow's got to say. It doesn't matter to me what that person said to me, how wrong they done me. They made fun of my casserole 20 years ago. Neighbor, put all that junk to the side. Don't worry about the color of the carpet. Just worry that God is present because where he is, there is liberty. And I'm here to tell you that God has come to set the captive free. For the Son of Man hath come. Uh, to seek and to save uh, that which was lost here this morning. So we see the man who needs reviving. But then we see the motivation for the reviving. Watch here secondly. He wound up weary, Brother Brian, because he was wrong. Anybody ever been wrong before? Anybody ever slandered your name? Anybody ever run you down while they're trying to lift you up kind of stuff? I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but brother, your preaching just ain't for me. Oh, what a blessing that is. <laughs> you know, I tell everybody, it's just not for everybody. Amen. I got one speed, and that's all I know. Amen. I am not a stick shift. I go from first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Amen. One speed, direct drive. Woo! There I go. It may not be for everybody, but I know that there's one God that is for everybody. And he came and died for everybody. Amen, that everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, I'm glad for the whosoevers. We see that this man has a motivation for the reviving. We see firstly that he was wounded and he was hurt and he was wronged by his own people. Listen, his own people went and tied him up, Sister Lindsay. I mean, listen, I expect at least my own people to have my back. Bless God, he's sitting there, he's, he's the judge of the land. And they come to him saying, hey, look, uh, I need you to do me a favor. Give me your hands. We're about to tie you up. I mean, what? Brother Brian, it'd be like you going to Brian and saying, Brian, let me see your hands. I'm going to tie you up. I'm just going to give you to the authorities. It's not that you're in trouble. It's not that just here. You take him. Go. Some people, it'd be easy to tie up and take somewhere else. But your own people? I mean, listen, I don't always agree with my family. I don't always like what's going on. I, we don't always agree, and we're not always sunshine and daisies, but I don't plan on tying nobody up and giving them away unless it's my sister. <laughs> Lord, if you're watching it, sis, I do love you. I do mean that from the depths of my heart, but I still tie you up and give you away. Amen. <laughs> there, there, there are some, some places you don't expect to get wounded, and it's from your own people. Nobody ever expects to get hurt at church, but guess what? You get hurt at church. You know why? Because church people are just like the people that go to Walmart. They'll hurt you at Walmart. They'll hurt you at church. They'll mean well when they're doing it too. Well, bless their heart. That's the opening line for the demise of every person getting ready to be said. Bless their heart. I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say it on me. Oh, bless his heart. He tries, doesn't he? His own people. Brother Brian, they came to him and they, and they tied him up. Listen, he's, he's weary. He's in need of revival. He needs motivation. And the motivation is he's been wronged, but he did not blame them. You understand that when he got to the place where they tied him up and they turned him over to the Philistines, he did not blame them? Honey, we got to quit playing the blame game. Honey, there's a lot of us that are stuck in our situations and we blame certain situations in the past is why we live the way we live. I'm going to hammer down and preach for just a little while. I quit looking at the problems of what happened in your past. I, your past cannot determine your future. I, I serve a God who made all things new. I, and the God that set me free I, did not want me to look back at the past I, and be tied up with it again. Quit using the past excuse. Well, you just don't know the home I was raised in. You don't know what my daddy done. You don't know what my mama said. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. I don't have to know. God knows. 
And the fact that you use that as an excuse not to move forward is cowardice. Amen. I'm not going to get stuck because of what happened in my past, brother. I want to move on and improve from what. I want my tomorrow to be better than my today. Amen. I, I, listen, I don't know. Maybe I was just cut from different cloth, but I strive to have a better day each and every day of my life. I strive to do more for the cause of Jesus Christ. I strive to be a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better preacher every day of my life. I don't get stuck in what happened yesterday. You can't. Listen, the Bible shows us that he didn't blame them. All he needed was God. That's all he called for. He forgot about those who wronged him. He forgot about it. He got his eyes off of him, and he put his eyes on God instead. He said, God, I'm not here for them. God, I just need you. You know what happens at revival? You get your eyes off everybody else's problems, and you get your eyes on your own problems. For so long, we've tried to fix everybody else. Fix you first. Until you can look in the mirror and see perfection, don't even try to talk to somebody else about fixing their life. You got your own problems. You got your own laundry. You got your own set of issues. Until you get yourself fixed, don't try to fix somebody else. Guess what? You'll never get you fixed. It's a lot of work, amen. Can I tell you that the Lord's still working on a lot of us? We're all under construction. We've got to get our eyes off of everybody else and realize God's got to do the work in our lives. Watch here. He gets motivated not only because he was wrong, but he gets motivated because he's been in war. He needs water because he's been in a fight. The Bible said heaps upon heaps he had slain with a new jawbone of a donkey. That, 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 that new means that, that a donkey just died. That donkey had just died. It was a fresh donkey. And the Bible says that he grabbed it out of the jaw and he slayed a thousand men with that jawbone. I know that everybody knows who Thor is. And we know who Superman is and Batman We know who all these Marvel and DC characters are, but I'm talking about the real deal. Samson was the real deal. He didn't need a hammer that when he threw it, it came back to him. He just needed the jawbone of a donkey and he needed the Lord on his side. Amen? Honey, I mean, this is a man that, I, brother, I would love, if there are some things I'd like to go back in the Bible and just sit there and watch. And you say, preacher, that's disgusting. He just killed a thousand men. I'd still like to watch that. Ain't he got, if I got a man in the house that'd like to agree with me right there, hey, Amen. Brother, we can sit there and be lullabied to UFC fights. We can go to sleep on that. My mom always asks me all the time, what is it with you and blood and guts? And I, I'm an American man. I, I, I can't describe it any better than that. I like action. I like fighting, amen? And you say, preacher, you ought not to be a fighter. You ought to be a peaceful man. I still like watching fights. Amen. I love seeing two men get in there and duke it out. Just don't do it here, amen? Take it outside, and then we'll come and watch you. No, you can't fight where there's unity. And I, I, I have found this out. Uh, here, here's a man that has been at war. See, unless we are active, unless we are one that gets up and we go for the fight and calls for the fight, why would we ever get thirsty? You know why a lot of us are weary and well-doing? Because every day we get up, it's a fight. Every day to go to that job is a fight. Every day to go to that school is a fight. Every day to go out in this world is a fight. Uh, every time we turn on the TV, it's a fight anymore. Uh, let me say this under your heart. Uh, even though he slayed a thousand, he still got tired uh, and he needed water. Uh, can I say this? The Bible says uh, that we cannot be friends with the world uh, and friends with God. Uh, we are in enmity with this world uh, or we are in enmity with God. Uh, and let me say this. Uh, honey, I'd rather stand with God uh, and stand alone to the world. If I'm with God, I am the majority. Honey, you better saddle up and get this under your head real fast. We are at war. There is a war for the soul of this nation. This nation has turned and went wicked. It has turned and went to perversion on every side and on every way. And the Christian, when he goes out, he gets tired and he gets weary in well-doing, but the Bible tells me, I'm a winner either way, Brother Chris. I can't lose. I've got the King of Kings. I, and the Lord of Lords on my side here this morning. Oh, can I say that he has been fighting the Lord's battle. If you go back to chapter number 14, verse 4, you'll see that God brought him to this place, this mountain, Mount Lehi, for a certain time and a certain reason as for what we are right now. We see also that, that he has enemies and we fight enemies like he does. Honey, we understand that enemies of all kinds try to rob us of our joy. You ever met somebody that just wanted you to be unhappy? 
That's the enemy. Tries to steal your joy. Tries to steal your peace. Can't sleep at night. You're restless. You get to a point where you just can't do nothing right. It seems like everything you touch turns to dust. Every time you turn around, something's messing up here. Something's messing up there. Let me say this. What you need is an old-fashioned revival for your soul. Uh, honey, when you're weary and you're tired, uh, honey, you need renewed and refreshed. Uh, you need to be given a fresh word and fresh manna from God. Uh, can I say that we all fight enemies just like Samson? Uh, honey, but can I say that we are to be different? Uh, the Bible says that we are peculiar people. Uh, we are to come out from among the world uh, and be ye a separate person. Uh, and because we do such... Uh, there will always be a war for us. Because we stand out and because we stand for the cause of Christ, you can expect this, there will be a war. There will be a battle. People will see you for who you are, call you for what you are, and expect and see you fall. Can I say this? Adults, teenagers, everybody look up here real quick. You belong to Way of the Cross, Free Will Baptist Church. If you're a visitor today, you belong. You best be careful what you're throwing out there on Facebook. Be careful what you're throwing out there on Twitter. Be careful about all those things you're saying. Because let me tell you this. You are to be separate and be called out, not blend in with them. And no matter what that world says, let me serve notice real quick. You represent Way of the Cross Free Will Baptist Church. Do not be a reproach on Way of the Cross Free Will Baptist Church. Guard what you say. Watch what you put out there. Because, neighbor, let me say this. If you hold a position in this church and you are a teacher, you are whoever you are in this church, if I find out that you're posting vulgar things on there, me and you will have a talk and I will sit you down. You may not like that, but, honey, you can't stop that. It's my job to protect this fold of sheep that God's given me. It is the job to take care of this church. It is my job to keep it as clean as I possibly can. Now, honey, I know that we all have bad days. We all say things we ought not to. But, honey, when you type it out, you have to premeditate it and then type it. And if somewhere in there the Holy Ghost ain't got a hold of your heart, honey, you need more than just God. You need a touch from Him. We've got to be careful, Brother Brian. We, we're at war. And because we're at war, the enemy wants to use all manners of things to attack us. Wants to use all manners of tactics to tear us down and to take us down. Honey, can I say you cannot be renewed, refreshed, honey, when you got one leg in the world and one leg in God's house. You're either all the way in or you're all the way out. There is no middle ground. Honey, the fence was a lie created by the devil. Honey, I'm going to tell you this. The Bible says he'd rather you be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, he will spew you out of his mouth. If you think that God's going to accept your sinful lifestyle just because he's God, you've got another thing coming, sweetheart. Uh, honey, he's God. Uh, he don't like sin. Uh, he hates sin. Uh, he loves sinners. Uh, but he hates the sinful lifestyle. Uh, and if you want to live in open sin, uh, that's your choice. I cannot stop you. Uh, but let me tell you this. Uh, if you want to get true help... Uh, and you want to get revival. Huh? Revival is a time when you're motivated huh? to turn from the wickedness, huh? to turn from the sin and look to God huh? and say, God, it's me that stands in need here today. Uh, what happened to the days, Brother Chris, when revival, we was talking about this not too long ago, back in the day, brother. People was having revival. And men of God, women of God stood up and they went to the altar and they cried and they begged God to forgive them their sin. Let's not be so naive to believe just because you're sitting on a church pew that everything's all right this morning. Let's not be so naive to believe that just because you're on a church pew that somebody hadn't sinned this week. From the pulpit to the back road, everybody in here sinned sometime this week. <laughs> Maybe somebody's already done some sinning today. No, it's Sunday. We don't sin on Sundays. <laughs> I guess that's our excuse for Monday through Saturday too, amen? Honey, to have real revival, real people got to get to the place where they are motivated by what is going on about them to see a change. We have to thirst for water. And honey, we have to, and this is what gets me, Brother, Brother Brian Sampson had to fight by himself. 
Let me say this. When we're in a fight and we're in a battle, no man should stand by himself. No woman should stand by himself. When you see somebody come broken and contrite in spirit to the altar, we ought to jump in on top of them and pray them through. Amen? Uh, because we're in this thing together. Uh, it's not about me. It's not about you. But it's all about him. Uh, and until we get to the place where we remember uh, that we're soldiers and we're called to the battlefield uh, and we fight together, uh, we live together, uh, and we die together, uh, we are one unified body before Christ. My problem is your problem. Your problem is my problem. And when we approach it like that, God will send the rain of revival on His church again. Watch here thirdly. I'm going to close her up right here. We see the man that needed revival. We see the motivation for the revival. But watch here lastly. Then we see the means of His reviving. How did He get revived, Brother Troy? I mean, we've talked on, we talked and we talked, but how did it happen? Go down to verse number 17 if you would. The Bible says, And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramoth Lehi. Go down to verse number 19. But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout, and when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in hot court which is in Lehi unto this day. Ramoth Lehi simply means this, the casting away of the jawbone. You know what the church is guilty of, Brother Brian, if we're guilty of anything? This is what we're guilty of. We are guilty of what God has given us, the sweet spirit, the love and compassion, and the grace and the mercy. And when we get what we need out of it, we toss it. Somebody needs to say amen right there. We'll come to church when our marriage is in trouble. We'll come to church when our finances are in trouble. We'll come to church when we're in trouble. We'll come to church when we need something. But when we get it, we're gone. Samson took the jawbone of that donkey, slayed a thousand men. The Bible says heaps upon heaps slayed them, a thousand. The Bible says soon he was done, Brother Troy, he took what he needed. And he tossed it to the side. But I want to show you something right here. Will, play me something soft. Watch this right here. God turned around and used what he's always had and gave him revival. He went right back to the very thing that he threw aside. The Bible says he claved a hole in the jawbone and he gave him water. Listen. There are times that we need revival, and there's times that we've used and abused God. Sure, we all have. Get what we need. Say a little prayer. God, if you'll just, just one more time, I promise, I promise, I promise. How many has got some broken promises they promised? Say this, real revival, this is how it begins. There's not a new recipe, Brother Brian. It's the same thing. People get down on their face, pray and seek God's will. God turns around, sends a man, gives him a message. He preaches it out of the King James Bible, and revival begins. When the people are ready to receive it. When the people can receive the word, revival begins. You can't have revival until you receive it. And to truly receive something means that you have open arms to grab hold of it. The Bible shows us the means of his reviving was the very thing that he cast away. Brother Troy, the Bible shows us that Jesus said, I have, have somewhat against thee, the first church, that you forsook your first love. You know what he's talking about, Sister Liz? He's talking about you. I have somewhat against thee, you forsook your first love. You know, your first love was not your mama, not your daddy, not that wife, not your girlfriend. Your first love was the one that loved you while you were being formed in the womb. The one that knew you before you were even there. The one that loves you is the one that fearfully and wonderfully made you. The one that loves you is the one that says, I can love him because he first loved me. With head bowed and eyes closed this morning, I, I want to be obedient, reverent to the Spirit of God this morning. There are times that we don't feel like being in church because we're tired, we're exhausted, we're wore out. 
But in the weary times when I come to church, when I was sick, when I didn't feel good, God all of a sudden show up, man, I started feeling like a million dollars. Revival cannot be experienced online. Revival is one of those things you have to be here. You got to be present. You won't get it from the lazy boy. You'll get it from the old pew. We understand that water is the word of God. Water is likened unto the Holy Ghost of God. God has a means for water for some lost soul today. I wonder if in this room, nobody's looking, everybody's being obedient. Nobody's looking around. I wonder if in this room, somebody be real honest and say, hey, preacher, I'm lost. I don't know the Lord is my Savior. I've never been saved. If you just lift up your hand, you put it right back down. Bless that hand. Anybody else? Bless that hand. and seen that God is good. He, he's revived me, but God, I turn my back on him. I, I'm living my desires and my life out the way I want to. That's you. Will you just lift up your hand? Amen. Oh, yeah. Bless this hand. Bless this hand. Maybe you're here today. We can get real honest and say, hey, preacher, I stand in need of revival. I'm dry. I thirst. I need God to do something in my life. and you said, Preacher, my life, I've done wrong, done some good. I try to do the best I can, but Preacher, if I'm being honest with you, I'm, I'm just weary today. If that's you, you're just looking at me. You're just tired. Tired of running. Tired of always ending up where you start. You put one foot forward, you get knocked back five steps. That's you, just lifted your hands, which is pretty much the entirety of this church. Can I invite you to come to this old-fashioned altar? You say, preacher, what for? To pray, to seek God's face. While they're coming, you come. If you need somebody to pray with you, we're here to pray with you. We ain't got nowhere to go. The buffet will be there when we get there. I care more about the soul of a man than I do my next meal. While these are coming, you come. You raise your hand for any reason, you come. I believe God wants to do a work. I believe God can help. I believe God can restore. If you're dry, God can do a tremendous work. Neighbor, don't let nothing hold you back from coming. The Bible said the Spirit of God will not always strive with men. If He's calling you today, He may not call tomorrow. You come. You come. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. If your neighbor's in the way, say, get out of my way. i got to go get something. You need to get what God's got for you. Please don't hesitate. I can't do it for you as much as I'd love to. you have to do it yourself. But if your heart's beating a thousand miles an hour, and you're trying to figure out what to do next, here's what you do. You stand up. You take one step towards Him. And God will do the rest. It's just one step. It's a one-step program. I believe people are getting help up here. I believe people are getting revived up here. I believe some people are getting exactly what they need. Would you come and get your portion? Don't leave here the same way you came. You don't have to. It's a life of empty dreams and broken promises. A life that has got you nowhere fast because you tried everything on your own. You need revived. You need replenished. You need renewed. The only one that can hand that out is not the preacher, not the deacon board, but God himself will claim a spot for you. He'll hollow you out a spot right here in this altar. You can come and drink from it. Don't you dare hesitate. While these are still praying, you've got time. Thank you. 
by his own confession, he's weird. No, he's not weird. Lord, he just flat out wore out. God, just like me, I've been tired and wore out. had to come to you crawling. God, I believe that you can do something in his life like you've done for mine. God, I pray that you would meet him right here in this place. God, I pray that you would clave out a spot right here in this whole fashion altar. Take this, my brother, and restore him. God, renew him. God, fill him up to overflow that when he leaves this place, it's different. And when he goes home, his children don't recognize him as the same daddy. That his wife would have a new husband. That God, everything in his life would be new. God, help this, my brother. Touch him. Guide him. From this day forward, Lord, let him be refreshed and renewed as a wellspring daily springing up. I thank you for his confession. I thank you for his strength to come forward. Now, Lord, take him from here. Carry him. Do that what needs to be done in his life. We'll thank you. We'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name. Does that mean I gotta give up my lifestyle? Does that mean I gotta give this up, give that up? Let me tell you something. It ain't about what you give up. It's about what you gain. Boy, I gave up some stuff, Brother Brian. And I gained a whole lot more than what I gave up. Giving up is one of the best things I've ever done. You're ready to wave the white flag of surrender. He's ready to come to get you. sleep they couldn't have a moment's peace until they turned over to you God I pray for the weary traveler I pray for the broken heart I pray for the one that's weary and well doing that God that you would touch them help them God as we get ready to move into this revival God I pray for brother Kyle Covey pray for Tim Larimore pray for brother Wesley Campbell I pray for the Parsons family that God that you would send revival through them God, we can leave here changed. This revival would be a revival that changes not only the church, but changes the county and changes the country. Let it start right here in this little old church. I believe you're able. Your word declares there will be a time when there will be a falling away. And there will be a time of revival. Will thou not revive us again, O Lord, that thy people may praise you again. 
We seek you, God. We ask you. Do that what's impossible with men in this place. We love you. We thank you. We ask you. Name above all names. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sure do love and appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. You saw who our visitors were this morning. Don't you dare leave here without shaking their hand. Tell me how much you appreciate them. I'm glad they're here. Amen. Blessing unto my heart. If you haven't been here in some time, but you're not a visitor, you're family. And it's good to see you home. Amen. There's always a place at home, ain't there, Brother Troy? Amen. Amen. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, let me give you some announcements in, in lieu of dismissal. Uh, amen. First of all, uh, choir practice this afternoon, 5 o'clock. Uh, amen. We, we love and appreciate the choir. They're getting better and better, getting sweeter and sweeter. We got new songs. We're getting to that point. Amen. We're getting ready to turn loose and get just get after it. So we're looking forward to it. Amen. You come. Get ready for choir practice. Excited about that. Five o'clock. Church will be at six o'clock tonight. The God of Sunday mornings, the God of Sunday night. And I believe he can show up in both services and bless and touch us in ways that we can't even imagine. True revival will begin with hunger in the soul for more church. That's how it begins. I didn't even steal that off a cereal box. That was quoted from Justin. I don't say many profound things. Somebody write that down. So, uh, secondly, uh, we have a little uh, meeting that needs to take place. All the ladies that are going to the ladies' retreat, if you'll please meet up here with Sister Brandy. Uh, she would like to meet with you, get some itinerary plans put together. Uh, ladies, do remember the bail money is running low. Uh, we can't get you out of jail in Tennessee. They keep you for a while. Unless you're Daniel, then they send you back. <laughs> Got him. Amen. Amen. We we appreciate yes, ma'am. What there? Yeah. In case you don't know, the ladies are going on a retreat up to Pigeon Forge and uh, uh, November the what? November the twelfth. Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. Going to go up there, spend a day. Going to eat good. Going to shop a lot. Uh, getting some Christmas stuff. All that good stuff. You know, ladies, just go out there and look at a thousand things, touch two thousand things, buy one. That's just how it goes. Amen. If that's, if, that's what, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Amen. It'll be a joy. Ladies, if you want to go or you're interested in going, please meet up here with Sister Brandy. I, I love when the ladies get together and they go out and do stuff. Ladies Auxiliary yesterday, I heard it was tremendous. Uh, great outpouring from the church. We thank the church for everything that was gathered. Uh, we filled up a mini, minivan full. Uh, amen. And they couldn't hardly hold no more. Uh, so we appreciate this church, the association for all that it gave, uh, all the goods. They go for a good cause, and we appreciate all that. Amen. Back in the foyer. There is a sign-up sheet on September the 28th. We're going to be having a dinner here at the church at 5.30. It's a Wednesday night. We're going to eat together. It's going to be a unique service. This will be the last service before revival starts on Sunday morning with Kyle Cody. We, we urge you to be here. I expect God to do great things in this, in this meeting. We're going to have some baked spaghetti, some salad, some bread. Uh, amen. You come and eat. I know a big time on, on, on Wednesdays you will rush trying to find a meal, find a this, find a... It'll be here. Just come and eat. Amen. We'll fellowship together. We're going to talk. We may do a little preaching. Who knows? We're going to just let the Lord lead in that. We're excited about the opportunity to do that. that there's a sign-up sheet for that. Please RSVP so we know how many to prepare for. Uh, and if you sign up, just say, just, just come. Okay? Amen. Uh, also, there's a sign-up sheet back there for feeding the Parsons family. The Parsons family spends 50 weeks out of the year, and there's only 52 weeks in a year, 50 weeks a year on the road. They don't ever stop and have home-cooked meals. They're always Cracker Barrel, which there's nothing wrong with Cracker Barrel, uh, El Acapulco, all that stuff's all well and good, but that's all they ever get. I would like for this church, I need four families, four people, four cooks, to sign up to cook them a meal while they're here and feed them. They're going to be parked there in the back in the camper. We just bring the meal over to them. You say, Preacher, I want to bring lunch and dinner. Knock yourself out. There's four things up there. If more people want to sign up, they're not going to turn down food. There's, there's five of them. They'll eat. Amen. They're a bunch of little tiny girls, but they'll eat. Amen. I promise you, they put that food away. They know what they're doing. Amen. Some of you know the Parsons. You know what I'm talking about. They can put some food away. Amen. And Kenny, he's all six foot five of him, about 180 pounds, and he eats, amen, more than I do. So, amen. You come, and if you would, sign up for it. The sign-up sheet's there in the back. Excited about that. Next Sunday morning, Brother Reuben Kaysen will be with us. Amen. We're excited about having him. We invite all of you to come back and hear Brother Reuben Kaysen. Uh, we're excited about that, excited about the opportunity of Reuben Kaysen being here. He is our state promotional director of North Carolina Free Will Baptist. It is not uh, 
He's not some uh, king that we hold up on a pedestal. He's come to preach the word and come and be a blessing and help to us. But it is great, and it's a blessing to have him with us. Amen. He has a tremendously busy schedule, and he likes what he hears is going on the way of the cross Freeville Baptist Church. People talk about us, and that's a good thing. And amen. If they got bad stuff to say about us, there's more good that outweighs the bad. Amen. Say what you will. This is my favorite place to come. If I didn't like this church, I wouldn't come to it. You know why I like this church, Brother Troy? Because you're here. I love y'all. Brother, I don't find any greater joy preaching somewhere else. If I, if I ever find that other place, that's where I'll be. This is where I have my joy. This is my heart. And this is what God gave me. And it's a privilege to have each and every one of you here. Any announcements? Anything I'm forgetting? Ladies Auxiliary, September 24th, yard sale right out here in the front lawn. Uh, amen. Weather permitting. Come out here and buy some stuff. Come out here and sell some stuff. If you'd like to sell some stuff, get with Sister Barbara, Sister Brandy, get you a spot, $10 for a spot, sell your heart's content, clear out that building, clear out the shed, clear out the garage, uh, take your husband's lazy boy, throw it out. I don't care what you do, just come and do it, amen. It'll be a blessing and honor, amen. We're going to be doing some work here also for the men. Uh, we're going to be dumping some mulch there in the back of the playground, uh, amen. So we'll, we'd like to have as much help as we can with that, amen. Bring your forks and pitchforks and we'll get after it. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. God has certainly been good. He's been a blessing. I love when he shows up. When he shows up, he shows out. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We'll dismiss together in a word of prayer. Ladies, again, just meet right up here. If you're here this morning and you didn't come to this old-fashioned altar and you still feel that tug on your heart and you need somebody to talk to, amen, I told you, the buffet will be there when I get there. I'm, I am not concerned in the least bit. I have an office back there. i got an altar back there. We can pray back there, pray up here. I don't want you to leave here the same way you came. The Bible says he's come to make all things new. I want to leave a changed creature. Amen. We certainly do love and appreciate you. Again, it's good to see you. Make sure you go to the visitors. Amen. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Shake their hand, hug their neck. Amen. It's good to see them come this morning. Amen. Boy, God's certainly good, ain't it? Amen. We love and appreciate you, amen. Looking forward to seeing you at choir practice tonight, uh, church, 6 o'clock, amen. Brother Norman, would you dismiss in a word of prayer, brother?